Hello everyone and welcome to a collaboration between myself and Matt of Bleep and Jeep. So what's going on? Well, Matt has tied a toe strap around the engine of a Jeep and then he's tied the other end of that toe strap around a tree and then he's going to accelerate that Jeep and see what happens when it hits the end of the leash. Why is he doing this? Well, I'll let him explain that to you real quickly. This is scientific. We're doing this for scientific experiment purposes because I mean, this could happen in real life, and you want to know what's going to this go. Could, this could have, you could have 300 foot, 150,000 pound strap hooked to your motor it's, in real life. It's, <laughs> you never know when you're going to get tangled up, you know. It's science. <laughs> Okay, so maybe there's not a good reason for doing this, but then I started thinking, you know, pulling an engine in 10 seconds out of a car sounds a lot like a subplot from a Fast and Furious movie. And that also helps me to justify this experiment, because I was thinking, you know, this is pretty sad that we're going to destroy a Jeep here. Uh, but then I thought, you know, Everyone loves the Fast and Furious movies. We know that's a fact. So if everyone loves Fast and Furious movies and they destroy cars in Fast and Furious movies, then it's okay for us to destroy a Jeep in a hypothetical subplot for a Fast and Furious movie. Also, can we just take a moment to recognize that Fast Five and Fast Six are the exact same movie? They've got the characters listed in the same order up at the top. They've got the actors standing in the exact same order. Paul Walker's even wearing the same shoes in both films. It's literally the same movie, and yet I paid for both of them. Okay, enough about Fast and Furious. Let's talk about 10 second cars. So when Matt initially approached me about this idea, he said he was planning on getting an older Jeep that weighed about 3,000 pounds. Surprising that Jeeps, yes, did in fact used to weigh uh, less than 3,000 pounds or around 3,000 pounds and would have a zero to 60 in about 10 seconds. That was a conservative estimate. Uh, so we make sure we have enough length in the toe strap. And so his questions for me were, how long does this toe strap need to be? And how strong does this toe strap need to be? So we're looking at length and we're looking at strength. Now, I know this looks incredibly boring because it's mostly math and you guys just want to get to the carnage. I understand that. So I'm going to try to go quickly through the math, but you know, you could find yourself in this scenario needing to know this information. And so I just want to make sure you're prepared for that. Okay. So the first question is how long does the toe strap need to be? And so this is basically just asking what speed do you want to get to? And then at that speed, how long does it take to get there? What's the distance that it takes to arrive to that speed? So he set the goal of around 60 miles per hour for the core to reach uh, with that zero to 60 being in about 10 seconds. So we can calculate the acceleration based on a zero to 60 of 10 seconds. We can get average acceleration, good enough for an estimate, change in velocity over the change in time. That gives us 8.8 .8 feet per second squared or 2.68 meters per second squared. Then from that, we can calculate distance. So distance equals one half V squared over A. You do the math here. Uh, these are all in imperial units on this side. And then our second question, it's all in metric units. I did that to make sure everyone was unhappy. So we can all complain together in the comments. It's going to be great. So this math gives us 440 feet for our distance or about 134 meters. And so does that mean we need a tow strap that's 440 feet? Well, no, it does not. If you start with the truck way behind the tree, so you're basically doubling the length of your rope and then you drive past the tree and that way you only need about half that distance. And so Matt got four different straps, each one of them 70 feet in length. And so that adds up to 280 feet. We multiply that by two, we get 560 feet. Then we account for the fact that we have to wrap around a tree. We have to wrap around the engine. We have to tie these tow straps together. And that gives us at least about 500 feet for this Jeep to accelerate before it reaches the end of the line. Okay, so now we need to understand how strong the toe strap needs to be. And so we're going to assume that the Jeep itself is perfectly rigid. And that's a stupid thing to assume because it's not true at all. Uh, and I'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But basically, we need to figure out the force that that toe strap is going to have applied to it. And we're going to determine that force using a rigid Jeep. So it's just one thing that's attached to the end of this toe strap. And we're assuming, you know, the bolts aren't going to go flying, it's not going to rip apart, it's going to stay together. And so assuming that, uh, we know that work is equal to force times distance. So that's the force that we're trying to figure out. This distance is how long it takes for the Jeep to stop. Basically, how much stretch are we going to have in our toe strap uh, is what we're going to be modeling here because we're assuming that the Jeep itself is rigid. So we divide the distance over, we get force equals work divided by distance. Work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So when the Jeep is traveling at 60 
miles per hour, it has a certain amount of kinetic energy, and then it comes to a rest, zero miles per hour, it has no more kinetic energy. And so that's what we're gonna calculate for the top portion of that equation. And then we're dividing by distance D, which is how much that toe strap stretches. Now we don't know how much it's going to stretch. Toe straps are generally designed to not have that much stretch. And especially this giant one uh, that has been made for this uh, isn't going to have too much stretch. So if we assume, you know, somewhere in the just like one to 2% stretch range, uh, we're going to have a force that's going to be applied to that toe strap of 977 kilonewtons if the toe strap only stretches half a meter and 488 kilonewtons if the toe strap only stretches one meter. So what does this mean? Well, in our hypothetical scenario, it means that we need a 220 thousand pound toe strap if it were to stretch half a meter we would need a 110 thousand pound toe strap if it were to stretch an entire meter and that's assuming the jeep is rigid now this is a pretty uh beefy ask for a you know toe strap to handle but matt actually ended up finding one that had a rating of 155 thousand pounds now, going back to the assumption that this is an absolutely rigid Jeep, the toe strap really only needs to be as strong as the weakest link on the Jeep. So I think it's safe to assume that the engine mounts are not going to be able to withstand 155,000 pound force. So this is certainly going to be overkill, uh, but we know that the limiting factor is not going to be our toe strap. So then Matt's question to me was, what's going to happen? And to be honest, I have no idea, uh, but I think there are some forces that we can at least analyze and kind of predict what may happen. And so the biggest force, of course, is just going to be pulling straight back on that engine. Now it's wrapped around the engine and then below the front axle. And so because of that, there's also going to be that downward force kind of pulling back and down on that front axle. And so, you know, if we just assume on this, this biggest force having its way, well then perhaps it's just going to take the engine and the front axle and just rip it all straight out the back and the car just slides forward. So here I have basically a perfect replica of what's going to happen. I've got the Jeep here and then the toe strap connected to the front axle. And so if we take that downward force more into consideration, then perhaps it's going to pull it forward, rip everything out, and then the car flips over. And then also I think there's going to be a bit of a side force because it's driving by the tree. And so if the tree is planted here and it comes across like that, you can see there's that side force where it's going to want to slide out. So perhaps also, you know, best case scenario for the most destruction, it pulls it sideways, starts to flip like that, yanks everything out, and then the body just continues to tumble. That would probably be the coolest scenario. Um, I'm going to say it's probably going to lean towards the first couple scenarios where it just yanks everything out the back and perhaps kind of flips over or just kind of scoots out in front of it. Uh, but it should be pretty interesting to see. I have not seen the footage, so I'm going to check that out as well. I will include a link to it for you guys to check out. And and we'll see what happens all in the name of science fast and furious and all things great thank you all for watching